Hello everyone and welcome to another video. My name is Lance and today we are once again taking a look at the alpha version of Bloodborne. Last time we explored the Great Bridge, which is where we're starting from today, but this time we're going to proceed towards and through the Aqueduct to finish off what remains of Central Yharnam. We have a lot of ground to cover, so let's just get right to it. So just as it is in the final game, the Aqueduct has two parts. First, we'll come to a smaller part where we'd usually find the game's earliest armor set. It's blocked off by this simple grate in the Alpha, but we can glitch through it and explore. The first thing to notice is there's no ladders to access or leave this part of the sewers, so as we drop in, we can't get back out. The next thing to notice here is there's absolutely nothing of use in this area. There are a couple of brick trolls, but no items whatsoever. Falling into the inescapable waterway reveals an incredible number of rats, but no items. At the far end, we can see the main part of the aqueduct in the distance, but where we'd usually find an enemy and a set of armor, there's nothing here. So returning to the Great Bridge, usually from here we have two paths to the aqueduct. The first is once again blocked in the Alpha by a grate, so we'll proceed through the Dark Residence to the back streets. As I've shown before, this too is blocked and we need to glitch through it. Now you might notice there's no brick trolls here as there would be in the final game. Well they are here, but they only appear when certain unclear conditions are met in the game. I've manually spawned them here just to show that they do exist. The unopened shortcut is here as well, although the lever has no interaction prompt. Continuing through the back streets and this time to the left of the sleeping brick troll, the most obvious change is the total lack of dogs in this residential area. The final game has quite a few dog enemies here. Well, once again, they are here, but they only appear in certain conditions. Possibly at a different time of day, although there's no way to be sure. In this area, we'll also find a set of armor that does not appear in the final game. This is the Blood Hunter of Gramia set. Unfortunately, equipping it simply makes the character completely naked, so I'm not going to demonstrate that here. The lonely old woman NPC is not present.
Proceeding forward into the aqueduct, we can see the same situation as in the final game with a light down the stairs revealing an abhorrent hunter. I did notice that I triggered a visceral attack sound effect here, but the enemy was not actually stunned. Back up the stairs we can find the same rafters area as in the final game, although the window leading to the rooftops where Eileen the Crow would usually be standing is just a vacant area. Back to the rafters, we see the hanging corpses from the final game are here to be shot down still. Although, this one of them just falls automatically and the item on it just disappears once it lands. Dropping down into the aqueduct, the whole design is just very subtly different. Usually this enemy is slightly to the left and a rifleman would sneak around the corner as we approach it. Also, these walls are not present in the final game, preventing some traversal. This enemy also has a different patrol path because of the aforementioned walls. <laughs> Further towards the waterway, we see far less enemies in this area. In fact, it's basically just a huge group of necrophage birds and a single brick troll. The clipping plane is all very unfinished here, causing the character to sink into the floor. These early versions of the trolls have a block move that, as far as I know, never made it into the final game. I noticed here that there's no storage system and any excess items are just left on the ground. I also noticed that the effect for using a blood vial is totally different, blue instead of red. Dropping down, we find the Alpha version's second unused set of armor. This is the Spy Hunter of Yarnum set. Unfortunately, once again, equipping this simply makes the character naked due to missing assets. As I mentioned, the clipping plane for this whole area has only been roughly boxed out, so there's a lot of errors in the environment. You might be wondering if I forgot to grab the item from the corpse I shot down from the rafters earlier. Well, here it is. Just two blood vials, unfortunately. Returning to the sewers, we can go up the ladder towards Gascoigne's family home. We find an executioner here that took four visceral attacks to kill.
Behind him is an item that can't be accessed, but the platform down there does have clipping and you can walk on it. It's hard to know if there was ever a plan to have this be an accessible area, but in the end that never eventuated. Across the bridge we find a lot of necrophage birds. We also find an item on a corpse. This weapon has no name or visible model, but I managed to equip it and try out its moveset. For some reason it causes a flame effect on one of your hands. It seems to mostly behave like the saw spear from the final game. Up the ladder, we can see Gascoigne's family home is not here yet, but the shortcut otherwise works. Returning to the sewers towards Odin Tomb, not much has changed other than that the whole area is just very rough and unfinished. The man-eater boar is missing some effects, and the items are different. The sewer just has a dead end, as opposed to a massive fatal drop in the final game. Heading up the ladder towards the bridge to Odin Tomb, we can find an item and open the shortcut elevator back to Central Yharnam. The elevator is missing sound effects. The bridge to Odin Tomb plays out basically the same as the final game, although the fireball ignites itself rather than having a torch-wielding citizen light it. Continuing into the fight with Gascoigne, the game tries to play a cutscene, but fails and drops us immediately into the fight. The game performance suffers pretty significantly as the fight goes on. The fight plays out basically as you'd expect, although Gascoigne's dialogue throughout is entirely different. I'll let you hear as much as I was able to capture. The reek of blood. Peace, Mbasa. 
His death animation is fairly anticlimactic. He drops the key to the Great Bridge, which we'll talk about in depth in another video. No lantern or warp chair appears, unfortunately. And where Viola's corpse usually is found with a red brooch, there's just one with five blood vials that I was able to comically collect one at a time. We can open the gate here using this lever, although the pop-up here says used the key of the Great Bridge, the events here are obviously not quite laid out correctly. That message is actually procedurally gen- So with that gate open we can leave Central Yharnam, and we do find that the path to Cathedral Ward is certainly a lot different here compared to the final game, but as the next map won't load correctly without us falling into oblivion, we will leave it here for the time being. I hope this video wasn't too long, but we did cover a lot, and as always, if there's anything you'd like me to go into more detail on, do let me know in the comments. If you did enjoy this, please go ahead and let me know by hitting the like button, and if you'd like to follow along as we see more unseen and cut details from Bloodborne, definitely feel free to subscribe, as there's always so much more to see. If you'd like a behind the scenes look at how I make these videos, be sure to follow me on Twitter at ManFightDragon, and either way, I'll see you next time.